Hello and welcome to the third Earth System Data Pulse video to accompany the COP26 climate negotiations underway up here in Scotland. In our previous video, we spoke about why 1.5 degrees centigrade is such an important upper ceiling to global warming targets. In this video, I'd like to address our prospects of meeting or breaching that target. For context, the world has already warmed by about 1.1 degrees relative to pre-industrial levels. This leaves about 0.4 degrees centigrade of leeway, if not less, since there is a lag between the temperature of Earth and the pollutants that are already in the atmosphere. Whether or not we breach 1.5 degrees depends, of course, on our greenhouse gas emissions, and principally our emissions of carbon dioxide, CO2, which is the most important greenhouse gas due to the volume of emissions. Our history of CO2 emissions is plotted here through time in billions of tonnes per year. The steep rise is patently clear, and if you're wondering what the step change is in 1850, this is when measurements associated with land use conversion are added to the total emissions. Converting forests to concrete, for example, adds carbon to the atmosphere. I've marked the emission values for two years for later use, 2011 and 2019, and I've not selected 2020's values because this year is not representative of normal economic activity as a result of the COVID pandemic. In order to predict possible future climate change, we drive mathematical models of the Earth's climate system with different future levels of CO2. It is the output of these computer simulations that provides the UN COP process with the scientific basis on which to negotiate targets. Earth System Data and the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research built a Climate Explorer app allowing you to examine simulated future climates from five of the main European Union climate models that have been submitted to the UN process. I will place a link for this feature below. The simulations of future climate on which the COP relies are driven with five main trajectories of CO2 emissions, each resembling different socio-economic pathways that humans might take in the next 80 years. At the top here is SSP 5 8.5, an envisaged future in which no effort is made to decarbonise the world. Fossil fuels continue to run the economy and economic growth is prioritised over sustainable lifestyles and businesses. CO2 emissions in this scenario surpass 120 billion tonnes per year by 2080. In the middle are some trajectories with more moderate emissions. In these scenarios, the world adopts some decarbonisation strategies. And at the very bottom are two scenarios attempting to depict future emissions in line with the 2015 Paris Agreement trying to meet the 1.5 degree threshold. So, what happens to the Earth's temperature in each of these possible futures? Superimposed here for each CO2 scenario is the average temperature change by 2100 in all UN class climate models run using these carbon emission concentrations derived from each of the emissions profiles. Adding the observed emissions from our earlier plot makes for some alarming viewing. If CO2 emissions were to stabilise at today's values and stay there for the remainder of the century with no further growth, we can envisage a global mean temperature change somewhere in the region of 3 degrees. This would be a catastrophic outcome and underlines the need for rapid decarbonisation. It's also self-evident from this graph that the prospects now of adhering to the best case bottom blue curve scenario are virtually nil since massive worldwide carbon reductions would need to begin immediately with no delay. Unfortunately, it is therefore virtually certain that we will now breach the 1.5 degree threshold, something that most climate scientists who have been at liberty to speak freely have probably accepted for a reasonably long time. Where then does this leave us? A more plausible future sees some countries taking meaningful action in the coming two to three decades, whilst other countries may delay in their own action. Assessing all countries' submitted reduction targets filed before the start of COP26, NDCs as they are called in COP lingo, leads to a conclusion that our trajectory lies somewhere between the solid black and orange lines. Indeed, I have now heard both the lower and upper estimates of 1.8 degrees and 2.7 degrees respectively 
begin to be quoted in COP26 meetings as our current destination. In my opinion, our trajectory most likely does lie between 1.8 and 2.7 degrees, but if anything, there is likely to be a higher probability towards the upper estimate, accounting for the fact that 100% of pledges may not be met. I say this in recognition of the highly ambitious nature of some pledges and the difficult policy decisions that are going to be needed to achieve them. I have heard some at COP refer to our new trajectory as something of a success because at the time of the Paris Agreement signing in 2015, reduction pledges were insufficient to avoid even a 4 degrees warming. Whilst it does reflect relative progress, we need to be extremely concerned with any prospect of warming the planet to 2 degrees, let alone beyond that figure, for reasons outlined in the scientific literature and some of which were summarised in our previous video. Regional amplification of global mean temperature rises at 2 degrees would invoke destabilising changes to both the biosphere and climate system. Natural and human systems would be severely impacted. At best, we may be able to afford the briefest of overshoots of these thresholds as a last resort, for example for a decade or less. Beyond that, warming at these levels is likely to trigger irreversible systematic changes to the planet, the foundations of which are already being laid in today's warming of 1.1 degrees centigrade. Thanks for watching. I hope this video provides some meaningful context to the final week of COP26 negotiations.